So I got the 3.7 pulled out of the H3T and on to the engine stand and got it all torn down. It's not looking good. You guys remember when I said this uh, motor's going to be cylinder number 5 spun rod bearing? Yup. So I didn't video the actual teardown process but I did take some videos on my phone of what I was seeing and some pictures of what I was seeing when I was tearing it down and I'll put those on the screen now. Very expensive glitter. Before I show you guys the bearings, um, I've got the crank laying in the bottom of the motor here and I'm gonna show you guys just how scarred up this crank is. Um, I'm really hoping that I can rebuild this because I'd like to rebuild this motor and sell it. But these are pretty chewed. There's your front bearing. Just enough where you can feel it, but uh, kind of looks worse than it really is. Main bearing four, our thrust bearing's pretty gritty. And then six is, can you guys hear that? Maybe not with a microphone facing me. So the real issue is actually the connecting rod bearings, because remember how we talked about in the last video, these bearings get oil from the main bearing behind them. So this front bearing doesn't have a hole in it, this one does, and it oils this first cylinder connecting rod. That sounds pretty good. You can feel it, but uh, can't really hear it scratching. So cylinder five connecting rod bearing on the crank actually spun and they were overlapping. So that was the knocking that you guys saw on the Instagram video that I put up. Cylinders four, three, and two all had bearings that had rotated. They were still, uh, they, they hadn't slipped over each other, but they had rotated in the bore. Cylinder one connecting rod bearing was the only bearing that was still in its place and came off with the cap where it ought to have been. Every other bearing in this motor is pretty much thrashed, so this is in worse shape than my motor was. Granted, I only ran my motor for less than a minute. I drove it from across the street to where it sits today, and that's all that it, that's all that it ever drove. So my buddies, on the other hand, I think he drove it um, a little while uh, probably at least from the shop to his house. So under five oil feed issues. It's it's a thing, guys. It it absolutely is a thing. The cylinder five connecting rod failure and the oil starvation issues that these motors see is absolutely a thing. This is what a machine bearing should look like. Should sound like. You literally can't even hear it. So this is my ten under. Uh, crankshaft that's been turned down for me and it looks amazing and that's what's going back into this motor so I've got to take his block off the engine stand and put mine on it but before that I wanted to show you guys what the bearings look like and what it took to get them out of that motor so these right here are cylinder number two Let's see cylinder number one still in the crank the connecting rod there but these guys showed signs of squishing these guys started to create a flange for itself. This was the other half of that bearing. I don't think I've ever seen that ever happen. That is just impressive and sharp. Yeah, another bearing. Back here, more squishage. Squish, squishage? Is that a word? These guys were absolutely chowdered. So let's get these blocks switched over. Let's get my block up on the engine stand because I've got to get this crane down to my buddy Justin down the street and get that back to him so that we can pull a motor out of his buddy's truck that I'm going to use for parts for my truck.
Oh, what could possibly go wrong? Hey, it's not dumb if it works. I'm on warp speed here. Eh, it survived. It only went like that far. So before we go to the block and show you guys the actual install of the part, I wanted to show you guys here at the whiteboard what I'm thinking and why I think this kit is going to work. We've got the oil pump and the line going from the front of the motor to the back. Hopefully you guys are tracking so far. Each time we have a hole in this pipe, that is a potential point of pressure loss. And so what we notice is that this first bearing is getting a lot more flow than the next one. And ultimately, if we run the engine out of oil, um, say you know, you're know you five or 6,000 miles into your synthetic oil change, you've still lost a little bit of oil, either from the PCB system or just burning it or JFM. Uh, it's just a matter of oil systems and how internal combustion engines work. As you lower the potential volume in the system, you start to really see the effects of that here at the end of the motor. So what I'm proposing is if we can make the pressure the same point here and here, we can actually help the flow of this entire system. So by taking a line and going to the back of the motor and tying it into that same oil galley, we're now equalizing the pressure of the ends of the tube. So we're not going to inherently create more pressure here. What it will actually do is level everything off and it'll equalize the pressure between the five different oil galleys in the crankshaft. By adding this line in between the front and back of the motor, we're in effect reducing the amount of openings between the pump and the end of the motor. So let's head over to the block that's going into the H3T and I'm gonna show you guys the first ever kit that I'm gonna be offering you guys to help make these motors way more reliable. All right, I hate when somebody tries to do something with one hand and tries to shoot YouTube videos. So I'm gonna put you guys on a tripod and show you guys what I'm talking about here. So if you guys remember from the last video, this is the oil galley going all the way through front to back on the motor. GM put these little weird plugs in here that I've not seen a use for in any of the three flavors these motors came in. So I'm not quite sure what the purpose of them is for, but today we're going to use them. So I found a fitting that threads into this hole. Now I've legitimately lost sleep over this trying to find this part. Problem is the threads are so deep in here that you can't get a standard fitting into it. So these fittings actually came with some thread sealant and the uh, ceiling washer. The kit that I'm gonna send you guys does come with ceiling washers, but I'm, what I'm gonna recommend is that you guys put a little bit of thread sealant or thread lock on the threads themselves to guarantee or help guarantee that these are not gonna leak and not gonna fall out because if they do, it's over, your motor's toast, and I definitely don't want that happening to any one of you guys. There's another plug here at the front of the uh, oil filter housing, and that gets removed as well. And your other fitting is gonna go in there just the same as the back. So I'm gonna send you guys a flex line with the ends already crimped on, and it's gonna be kinda coil up in the box. I will have the, the ends uh, kinda bent the way you need to, but uh, it won't fit out of the box. I just I can't ship this exactly. Plus, if I make it this way, I can sell the kit to you guys regardless of what motor you have. So this will work for the four cylinder two eight and two nine, the three seven three five five cylinder, and the four two six with the same setup. In order to do this in truck, you're going to need to take your intake out and the exhaust manifold that's kind of in the way. Um, I'll link the videos to that at the end of this video. But we're going to take our semi pre bent line here. We're going to hook it up on the front end and we're going to pass it through the side of the motor here. Forty five minutes later. 
All right, we'll get these fittings all tightened up. And, uh, I'm going to make sure that this bend is sufficient to clear the tensioner, the oil pressure sensor, the motor mount, the exhaust manifold. We're actually going to set the head on here and the uh, exhaust manifold to show you guys the clearance right now. So I've got a factory manifold here and just want to show you guys the clearance that you guys are going to expect. Good fingers width through there. And then obviously this guy's broken so and some nice big clearance here. And uh, room for days. So please make sure that uh, when you install the flex line that it's not going to rub or hit anything. Um, there might be a small amount of vibration but it's a flex aluminum line. I don't see that we're going to ever have any issues with it. Um, make sure it clears the header. Um, if you're concerned about the tightness to the header uh, you guys can do some exhaust wrap or some like tube wrap. I'll put a link to that below. I don't see personally an issue with it and I don't think we're going to include it in the kit but uh, you guys are more than welcome to click the link below and get yourself a little set of it. If you want to buy this kit the link will be in the description it'll be on badlandindustries.com and you guys can buy this kit. I'm going to make it in such a way that it'll work for the four five and six cylinder motors and that way you guys don't have to uh, worry about which uh, size tube and whatnot you're getting. Um, so it'll be all one kit for all three Atlas motors, 4, 5, and 6, and uh, you guys can go check that out. Uh, I'll give you guys this much. It's not a very pretty solution. Uh, then again, it's on the side of the motor, so you're never going to see it. Um, but uh, I would rather see this on the side of your motor than the spun rod bearings inside of your motor. So if you guys want to pick this up, go ahead over to BadlandIndustries.com. I'll leave a link below to the actual product and you guys can scoop this up and put it on your truck and if you do tag us on Instagram I'm gonna be pushing a lot harder to be on Instagram and you guys seem to be reacting and interacting a lot more often there so I'd like to uh, feature you guys and tag you guys on the public page and uh, give you guys a little shout out for doing this modification. If you guys want to see more videos like this on how you can improve the performance of your Chevy Colorado or if you want to check out the build log on the Colorado solid axle 6 liter 40s stupidity build that I'm working on, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you guys uh, share in the process.